hosts, Sweden didn't have to qualify for the finals. Instead, manager Svensson had to use matches like this one against the old Soviet Union to prepare his team for the battles ahead. Berlin opened the scoring when the new Soviet goalkeeper Chichesov fumbled across by Jonas Turn. It was an ideal start for Sweden. Only four minutes of play had gone and already they'd set up a platform of authority. Manager Svensson could hardly believe it. Sweden continued to attack the Soviet defence. One excellent run ended in a chance of a second goal. Instead, centre forward Martin Darlin shot over. Sweden cannot afford to be so wasteful in June. But this was no ordinary friendly. It was a semi-final of a four-team tournament in which the Swedes wanted to test their European Championship potential both on and off the field. The slack marking which allowed Sergei Joran to poach an equaliser proved manager Svensson has plenty of work to do. The match went into extra time. At stake was a place in the final against Italy, who'd beaten Denmark 2-0 in Malmo in the other semi-final. Sweden's defence again looked frail. Dmitry Kuznetsov shot the Soviets ahead with a goal which appeared to surprise him as much as goalkeeper Ravelli. One major problem for Sweden is successfully blending their mixture of home-based players with the stars recalled match by match from clubs in Italy, Germany, Belgium, England and Portugal. As Brolin's equaliser demonstrated, playing abroad has much more than just financial advantages. Life in Italy has sharpened his finishing talents and turned him into a dangerous goal poacher. Extra time can often prove an anti-climax, with teams shuffling weary towards the lottery of a penalty shootout. But not this time. With three minutes remaining, Igor Korneyev scored what proved to be the winner for the Soviet Union. Sweden, on all the evidence of their preparatory friendly.